Hello everyone, welcome back to Blockman Editor Tutorial. In these videos, we will give you a complete introduction to the Blockman Editor. In the previous lessons, we have already introduced how to write trigger logic for part, trigger node, and action node. In this video, we will give you a complete introduction to the trigger system in the editor. Alright, let's get started. To reduce the difficulty of writing game logic, the editor provides a visual way of programming. This visual programming method is the trigger system in the editor. It allows us to achieve the desired game logic by connecting nodes representing different logic. And the specific game logic is written through the trigger editor. Next, let's get familiar with the trigger editor. Enter the editor, select the entity component, click on the player entity, and click on trigger edit in the right properties view to open the trigger edit interface. The interface we see now is the trigger edit for the player entity. We can create new trigger nodes by clicking the new button or the add trigger button in the upper left corner. It is important to note that each trigger node is unique and cannot be created repeatedly. If you want to delete a trigger logic, then you can select the trigger logic page and click the delete button in the upper left corner. However, the delete function cannot be undone and will delete all the logics in the trigger, so be careful when using it. As for variable end function, we will use them when implementing more complex game logics. They will be explained in future courses, so let's not go into too much detail here. The essence of the trigger system is that the editor triggers the trigger nodes we create and then executes the specific game logic connected to the trigger nodes. And the specific game logic is composed of different action nodes that are connected with each other. We call a complete game logic that consists of trigger nodes and action nodes a game event. Next, let's review the trigger node and action node. First, let's create a new trigger node. Each trigger node has a text description that is used to indicate under what circumstances the current trigger node will be triggered. For example, we created the trigger node when the entity enters the game, which will be triggered when the entity enters the game. Then each action node in the action sequence will be executed in order from top to bottom. If you want to add multiple action nodes, you can do so by clicking the add button below the trigger node. As for the void above the trigger node, it means that the current node will get a return value of void after the execution is finished. Because void means empty, the trigger node will have no return value after execution. To create an action node, we can open the action node list by double clicking or dragging the execution port after the action node. The list of action nodes contains a lot of logics commonly used in games, and we can select the action nodes according to the specific game content. Here, we select set entities HP to explain the action node. As you can see, there is also a text description on this action node, which serves to summarize the specific logic executed by the current action node. Above the text is a void, which is the same as the void on the trigger node. Below the text are two parameters, entity and HP. The text after the entity parameter is used to indicate that the current parameter needs to be connected to an action node with the return value type, entity. And, the trigger editor has helped us to filter the relevant types, and it can be seen that the list of action nodes open from this execution port has significantly fewer action nodes. We can see that the return value of the action node is of type entity when we select the entity that enters the game. And there is no execution port to the right of this node to connect to, which means that the current game logic can no longer be written backwards. If the current game logic does not meet your needs, you can try to change to another action node for editing. Unlike the entity parameter, the HP parameter has an additional input box. This means that we can either set this parameter by connecting the relevant action nodes, or enter the specific content directly in the input box. If we want to delete an action node, we can select the node and then click the right mouse button in the small pop-up window. 
more content on trigger nodes and action nodes will be covered in subsequent videos. You can also see the definitions of the nodes in the official manual. In the game components view, you can only write trigger logic with entity, item, skill, missile, and part. There is a trigger editor tab on their properties view. In addition to these components, we can also write region trigger and global trigger in the editor. Before writing a region trigger, we need to first create a region. Click on the new region button below the game resources view, move the mouse to the scene, and you can see a pink box following the mouse movement. By clicking the left mouse button, we have successfully created a region. In the properties view, you can see the trigger edit button, click here to write triggers for the region. The content of the region will be explained in subsequent videos. As for global triggers, they are in the game settings. Open the game settings, click triggers and scripts, open the trigger edit interface, the triggers created here are the global triggers for the entire game. Further information about the global triggers will also be covered in subsequent videos. That's all for this video. We hope it can help you on your way to a great creator. If you want to know more about the editor, you can comment below the video or post on the official forum. See you in the next video.